Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about see some domain 4 part 2. In this particular session, we're going to discuss about some coffee shots, which is mapped with DR side, VAPT and all that. I already made the part one of domain four and I got a very good response on that. So I thought, let me make a part two also. And by this combined video, you get a holistic view of the domain four. So in this video, we're going to discuss around 10 questions, which is cover with the snacks. I'm sure with the snacks, you get a better visibility about the DR site. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So question is Aspirants Limited is planning to build an alternate site for e-commerce business services. Their primary requirement is to make the site with a maximum availability. Which site will you suggest most to implement? So to answer this question, I have a snacks with me. So let's discuss that snack first and then come to this question. See, when we're talking about sites, we have a different type of sites. The first is basically called as a redundant site. In redundant site, what happens is we have a site one and we have a site two. Whatever we have in a site one, people, process, technology and data, same like we have a people, process, technology and data. So customer is currently getting a service from the part one. If it's down, it is automatically get the service from part two. Definitely we will look for the redundant side in that case when business is basically highly critical in nature and customer is okay to invest in the recovery. So in a redundant site, in both location, we have a data, we have a server, we have a rack and we have a power and water. But when it comes to hot site, hot site is basically active and passive. We don't have a data, not much data, but server is there, rack is there and power is there. But warm site, no data, no server, only rack. Today, the best example is co-working space, right? You basically move your laptop from one location to other location. So that is basically called as a warm site. But the cold site is basically have nothing, only water and power. So if you get a question in the exam, which site take more time to restore? more time for recovery cold side because it is a cost effective but which site is immediately available then answer is redundant site it is also called as a mirror site so don't get confused okay one more site we have is reciprocal site or reciprocal agreement what is the meaning that we have a site one which is belong to deloitte we have a site two which is belong to pwc so they have signed the agreement in the case of disaster they can use my site and they can use their site in reality, it is not possible. Deloitte can have a tie up with PwC. So best use cases, we have a group of companies which basically share the load. And in that case, employees can basically work from their respective branches. Or the second example is healthcare in India, where the beds can be shared with other hospitals, banking sector in India, and the hotel industry in India, where they're sharing a beds, rooms with other customers and all that. Example like one host hotel, if it fully occupied, they can give the customer to the other hotel. That is how they share the load. Okay, so there you can see the reciprocal agree agreement. So maximum availability, highest availability we achieve in a redundant site, but it is basically very high cost also. And best site for testing a DR plan is hot site. Least test site which is used for testing is cold site. Very expensive to test a DR plan in the case of cold site because we need to move everything in the cold site. So going back to the question, they're looking for the maximum availability in a hot side is active passive warm side does not have a server cold side basically have nothing, but they're looking for the maximum availability and they're into e-commerce for them. Availability is a top priority. That is where the answer is mirror site. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Which site facility appropriately sized to support systems requirement? and configure with the necessary system hardware, supporting infrastructure and support people. Cold site removed because we only have water and uh, things. Warm site is also removed because they have a servers. They say a support system requirement. Mirror site is gone because it is done not have a data. So only close option left with B for beta because on a hot side we have everything except data. We need to move data and make it as an operational. That is why the answer is B for beta. Let's move to the next coffee shot thank you so question is which type of site can survive with the longest mtd for a customer longest basically more mtd it means like if i say mtd 5 hour and if i say mtd 10 hour it means we have a more time to restore 
so mirror side doesn't demand the longest MTD so a removed hot side compared to mirror site is there warm site is also there because in a mirror site data data there hot side we just need to move data so hardly in 24 hour we restore warm side we need to move server then move data which take more longest time compared to b and c but more longest time it will take is cold side because everything we have to build there that's what the answer is d for delta let's move to the next coffee shot thank you good question which site partially equipped office space that contains some or all racks rack mean simple rack okay no server telecommunication power source definitely a removed definitely d removed we left with b and c the thin line difference between the hot site and warm site is that in a hot site we have a server but the question is document there's no server there's only racks we need to move server so rack telecommunication power source you can see in the warm site so we need to move server we need to move data to make it as a operational so in that case that's where the answer is warm site let's move to the next coffee shot thank you what is the primary outcome of the lesson learned during an incident process option a improve incident response process makes sense justifying the existence of response team that is not the primary outcome because lesson learned is all about what what is the mistakes we did during our incident response process how can we improve how fast we can able to detect that what we have option c the step should be taken to implement the solution that is not only the thing option d become familiar with the process that is a basically come into the picture when we testing the incident management plan so c and d is part of the a ultimate goal of incident response process learning le lesson learn processes we need to understand how to improve the process what is the more fastest way we can able to respond to the incident so any question in the exam talking about ultimate goal of a lesson learn is all about improve the process let's uh, you know learn the mistakes what we did during the incident response process and how can we improve that that's why the answer is a for alpha like during an incident we need to call system administrator he must be available in 24 hour according to the procedure but he was not available so that is a lesson we have learned we need to keep some backup time so that is how you basically try to prioritize let's move to the next coffee shot thank you so question is which source of evidence from a compromised server is a most likely to be yield the most valuable insight for forensic investigation definitely network logs is very important because it give the network activity system logs is also important because it give the system activity restore from a last backup will not help me with that because we might miss the recent current data memory data and all that so if you take the bit by bit image of the system so this is the system a infected with the virus remove the network cable dump the memory and then we take a bit by bit image of the systems which is exactly copy the replica of the system which capture their deleted file slack space and everything and then do the investigation on the on that particular copy of an image will give you the the new learning so that is where the answer is c for charlie let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay it's also a good question what are the most important things to look for during an internal organization penetration testing activity as a part of a incident response program it means the question talking about what is the parameter or things need to be review when we're doing an internal pen testing which is internal network option a reboot the machine to break the remote connection but that is the role of a pen testing right okay b called vulnerability in the internal network and system security definitely we have to look for option c possible attack vector on system parameter that is also important but system parameter is external block inbound traffic that is an outcome so we're talking about during during is a present tense so answer is basically b b for beta see when we do conducting a penetration test we have a two type of penetration testing one is basically called internal and one is basically called as a external okay so internal pen testing is basically mean so example like this is my dmz this is my firewall and this is my internal network so we keep those systems in the dmz which is a public facing site if you review my domain 3 coffee shop you get a visibility about what is dmz so we appoint the penetration tester to do the external pen testing first it's always a good practice start with the external pen testing so the pen tester try to find public servers try to penetrate and from there try to gain access to the dmz and from there they try to hack the internal network and that is something we need to see if any penetration tester 
penetrate into the internal network, what is the damage he can do? By this, we can able to protect the network. That is why in this case, when we're doing an internal pen testing, we would like to know what are the internal threat we have. So this is all from my side team. Hope you find this video useful. And if you find this useful, do share in network so that maximum people can get a benefit from this. And do share a feedback in a comment section, which basically help me, meet, help me to uh, improve my content and make the better videos for the future reference. This is all from my side. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Good day. Bye.